Hi, Big Tractor Power fans. This video comes to you from Rantoul, Illinois, with the very first International 1460 Axle Flow Combine that was built back in 1977 is taking part in the soybean harvesting demonstration at the Half Century of Progress show. The Axle Flow brand has been a popular harvesting option for farmers around the world for over 45 years, and it all started back in 1977 when International Harvester introduced the Model 1460 and 1440 Axle Flow Combines. And in this video, we're going to learn about the production history of the 1460. We'll climb up in the cab and see the operator's perspective of running one. But first, let's head out to the field so you can see and hear the very first one built in action. When the International 1460 Axle Flow Combine was introduced in 1977, it began to change the entire combine market and the way combines thresh grain. The Axle Flow Combine introduced the single rotor to the combine market in 1977. International Harvester changed the way that many manufacturers began to look at the way their combines thresh grain. The Axle Flow uses a single rotor inside a cage that spins around to separate the grain from the chaff. International Harvester was not the first combine on the market with a rotary option. That credit goes to Sperry New Holland, who introduced a twin rotor combine using two rotors side by side to thresh grain back in 1975. But the Axle Flow style combine introduced two years later really began to catch the attention of the market and over the next 23 years, every manufacturer would introduce a rotary style combine into their lineup. Before the release of the rotary combine, combines used a walker system to thresh the grain. Here we can see a cutaway of an International 15 series combine that was the predecessor to the Axle Flow. Introduced in 1969 and offered all the way through 1976, the 15 series International used a threshing drum as the crop came into the machine after being cut. It would go through the drum, which would separate a majority of the grain and then drop it into an elevator, which would carry it up to the grain bin. Then the remaining chaff and stalks would be conveyed to the back of the combine and go through the straw walkers, which would shake the material, dropping out the remaining grain and putting it up into the grain bin, and the unwanted chaff and stalks would be deposited back out in the field. Let's head out to the field so you can see a conventional style International 815 harvesting corn. With the introduction of the 1460 axle flow in 1977, the threshing system changed with that axle style rotor being placed in the center of the combine. There was less cleaning area needed. The material would come directly into the combine, go through the rotor, the grain would be separated, and the material deposited right back out on the field. This allowed for a cleaner sample, 
more grain put in the tank, and also a more compact combine design. We can head out to the field so you can see an International 1460 harvesting soybeans in western Kentucky. This is a 1984 model which was produced right at the end of the International Harvester 1460 production. The 1460 Axle Flow Combine was manufactured from 1977 through 1985 at the International Harvester Combine Plant located in East Moline, Illinois. It's powered by an IHDT 436 six-cylinder engine rated at 170 horsepower. The combine features a hydrostatic transmission and 92-gallon diesel fuel tank. It's equipped with a 180 bushel grain tank and could be ordered with a 12-foot or 13-foot unloading auger capable of unloading grain at 1.9 bushels per second. There were three different combine options and we'll go through those because they had different weights and prices. The first combine was a standard grain combine and it weighed in at 17,990 pounds and was priced at $85,700. The second combine option was a corn special that weighed in at 18,275 pounds and was priced at $87,170. The third combine was a rice special and it weighed in at 18,710 pounds and was priced at $91,765. The difference in weights and prices on these machines are different components for harvesting the grain and that is why you have the variation between the three different options. The 1460 Axle Flow Combine remained in production for eight years. From 1977 through 1984, the combine was offered as the International Harvester 1460. This red combine featured a white cab top and white wheels. In November of 1984, International Harvester sold its agriculture division to Tenneco the parent company of J.I. Case. For 1985, the combine became the Case International 1460 Axle Flow and featured a red rooftop on the cab and silver wheels. This 1985 model is a very rare variation and it was only in production for one year and ultimately was replaced by the new Case International 1660 in 1986. Let's head out to the field so you can see and hear this Case International 1460 variation in action harvesting corn in western Kentucky. I'm up in the cab of a 1984 International 1460 Axle Flow Combine harvesting soybeans in western Kentucky so that you can get the operator's perspective of running one of these early rotary combines. It's really interesting to have been able to see the very first 1460 at the beginning of this video harvesting soybeans in Rantoul, Illinois and then having the opportunity to sit in one of the last International Axle Flow Combines produced before the transition to Case International in 1985.
I hope that you've enjoyed learning about the specifications and production history of the 1460 axle flow combine in this video, as well as having the opportunity to see and hear the very first one ever built. I want to thank the owners of the serial number one 1460 for bringing it out to the 2019 Half Century of Progress show to take part in the soybean harvesting demonstration. It's not every day that you have the chance to see a piece of farm equipment history at work out in the field. If you would like to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube where there are over 1,000 videos of farm machines at work. Make sure to click on the notifications bell as well so you'll know when the next Big Tractor Power video is released. New videos are coming out almost every day from the channel. If you have any questions or thoughts about this video, please leave them in the comment section below as I try to respond to every post that is made. If you would like to get a preview of what is coming up next on Big Tractor Power YouTube, make sure to check out Big Tractor Power Instagram where I share pictures and short video clips of what is currently being filmed in the field. As always, thank you for watching.